Good morning, students. Eric Maggotson here. We're going to go over Lab 3, Installing Windows 7 for CIS 279W7, Windows 7 Configuration Class. Uh, normally, you would do this on a local client workstation, installing a clean installation via DVD. But as you know, we have this great virtual machine environment, and we're going to do it in there. Uh, since some of you have asked about the very different interface from Virtual PC 2007 and Virtual PC on a Windows 7 machine, I'm on my Windows 7 machine and I'm going to go ahead and create a Virtual PC here. Now, in the instructions, essentially you're replacing the A machine that, that I've already built and given to you uh, for the lab. So consequently, I'm going to just go ahead and call this NYC-CLA1 so that's going to be my virtual machine again I hit create virtual machine this came up I hit next how much RAM do I want to give it well so that this installation can happen fast and because I know I have ample RAM on my computer to allocate to the virtual machine I'm going to give it two gigs of course I can use computer networking connections if I want Remember, in our environment, we're not going to normally do that. I'm going to say next. It's going to ask me what I want to call that VHD drive, that dynamic expanding virtual hard drive. I'll call it the same, of course, as my machine name to keep it uniform. And I'll say create. At that point, it's going to go in and create that. I can bring it up. And I'm going to pause it while it comes up here. Here is the virtual machine. As you can tell, it's trying to pixie boot, so I'm going to go ahead and say escape to that. I have put the DVD into my DVD player. Of course, I know that I have set it to where my virtual machine will see the DVD. I've escaped through the pixie. Now I'm just going to hit enter. It's going to do a quick restart. And as you can see, a little bit hard to see on screen, it's starting up and loading the Windows files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be pausing this video so we don't have a big long install video with a bunch of boring wasted time. So I'm going to install this and as different steps come up, I'm going to take you through those. So let me go ahead and pause until the next step. So as you can see, it's loaded the pre-installation files and uh, re quote unquote restarted into the graphical user interface that we standardly see when we're installing from a DVD. I have the choice of picking the language and the time and etc. at this point. Um, I can go ahead and then say next. Once I'm in the environment, of course I'm going to do install now. We would want to read the license agreement etc. And then I'm going to go ahead and pause it again while we wait for the startup to finish. So here is the license agreement. Again, I can't stress enough, folks, it is your job as a professional to understand the license agreement as you install software. So I do want to highly encourage you to go through sometime, print it out, read it, and uh, you know then move on. So I'm going to accept the license terms here. I can either run an upgrade or do a custom install. I'm going to do a clean install, so I'm going to want a custom. In this case, I only have a single partition set up. I could go ahead and create a unique partition. I'm going to just say next. So this is right where I would create that partition for maybe my operating system and my applications, and that way I could repartition the rest of the drive into a data drive to save my uh, data files on a separate partition of course this makes it much faster if I'm needing to restore this computer I'm not having to restore all my data and the operating systems and my applications so as you can sell, tell it's copying the Windows file it's going to expand these files this of course takes a while so again I'll pause it and what I'll do is unpause it as it goes through this uh, so you can see sort of how it's going at which point we'll continue with the installation so here we go we'll take a quick look at the progress as you can see it's expanding the Windows files to 19 percent 
Once it's done, it'll start installing the features, and we'll continue from there. So we've got through the installation process of all the files, and it will again restart our virtual machine so that we can configure the Windows 7 installation that we just installed. So the machine has restarted. Once it restarts, it completes the installation, and then it'll bring up all the basic configuration screens that we can confirm, start putting in our information to make the client specific to our needs. So now that it's completed the installation, it's going to restart one more time, at which point we're going to be able to put in an initial username and computer name, all that good stuff. I'll show you that here in just a sec. As it restarts, it will, as you can tell, set up as preparing the computer for the first time use. We're now ready to configure the basic information. In your lab, it calls for this to be student. And then this, of course, I need to call this NYCCLA1 because we already have a CLA. And of course, I'm not going to install this to our uh, Active Directory domain because I already have the CLA machine that I created for you. We'll use that standard password that we always use. Always like to put a hint in here. I'm going to just say Wiley's password for everything. As we know, that special password we use. The product key. I'm going to pause this while I put in the product key for obvious reasons. All right, so the license key has been put in. At this point, I can choose whether I want to use the recommended settings, install important updates. Of course, this would work only if I'm attached to the internet. I'm going to go ahead and say, ask me later. I can confirm the time, everything else. Click next. I can choose whether I'm initially putting this on a home network, work network, public network. I'm going to choose work network as if I was going to install this into an Active Directory domain once I finish the uh, installation. Of course, again, as we've discussed in class, even if I have a small business of five to ten machines, I'm most likely not going to install Windows 7 with a new installation via DVD. I'm going to go ahead and invest the initial time to do all of this in an automated environment, uh, you know, via remote installation or using the AIK supplied with Windows. So it's going ahead, it's restarting. I'll pause one last time, then we'll configure and we'll take a look at what happens when we're done. So the machine has started up. I'm in the account that we set up the student account and I'm ready to use the computer. Again if I wanted to, just as a quick reminder, I could come in and right click, go to properties, and add this machine to the Active Directory domain. So that's it. That's all I have for you. Uh, enjoy and I will see you after the holiday.